forward to Luca to give us a, a, a presentation about uh, his study. Luca is uh, our senior lecturer uh, of economics in Burbank, University of London, and he is also a founder director of our Center for the Political Economy and Institutional Studies. And uh, his research is mainly focused on examining or discussing the role of the social norms, social values and trust on the governments of the state citizens relationship and also uh, focus on the impact of the cognitive aspects on individuals attitude, as, uh, attitudes towards the corruption and tax evasion. I think uh, his work has been uh, published in many top journals, such as the Cambridge Journal of Economics or Journal of e Institutional Economics. And today, uh, he will give us a very, very interesting study it's discussing about the regional difference in the innovation, uh, business innovation in China. And uh, he will talk about uh, discussing this uh, phenomenon from both the institutional theories and economic geography and also uh, he will bring in the concept of the social trust to trying to explain uh, the difference, uh, the economic difference in different provinces. And uh, this presentation will last about 20 minutes, right? And afterwards, it's very, uh, we are very happy to invite uh, Dr. Chen Yan Zhou here as our main uh, discussant for this topic. And Dr. Zhou is the uh, co founder and CEO of the Triple Helix Institution. And we know this Triple Helix Institution mainly uh, specialized in the cooperation, be uh, in discussing the cooperation between the government universities and uh, industry. And she received a PhD in science and technology, uh, technology innovation from the Northeastern University in China. And her research mainly covered the triple helix theories and practice, and also including the in entrepreneurial universities, regional development strategies, and entrepreneur policies. Also, uh, her publications cover from the science to technology, including uh, the scientific basis in the technological era and also the triple helix. I think uh, her contribute a lot in the theories of triple helix, and I believe her specialization will give us a quite deep, a will give us a further and also in-depth discussion about uh, Lucas' presentation afterwards. And after their discussion, we also invite uh, our uh, participant, our audience, to drop in this discussion as well to see. Uh, how you like Lucas studies and how we can further improve these studies uh, in the near future. Okay, I will give it to, <laughs> to, to Luca now. Luca, you are muted. Hi guys, thank <laughs> you so much for uh, this very generous presentation and uh, I'm, I'm very honored to, to to be here and presenting this work especially given the very high profile of the discussion as well so um, thank you for everyone for 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 this opportunity as you said that this work is about social trust and firms innovation in chinese provinces and has been co-authored with uh, uh, gagiji sashirov uh, and Fu six chuan uh, now before starting talking about uh, the work let me give me let me give you a roadmap of the presentation. So uh, I will talk uh, on what is the paper about, and then I will focus a little bit more on the motivation. So how did the idea come about, and why social trust and why China? Then I will give a little bit of a presentation on the data and the key results, and on the extensions of the models to other key aspects, uh, which are the financial constraints the quality of formal institutions, the separation between state-owned versus non-state-owned firms, and the separation between high-tech versus non-high-tech firms. And then I will give you uh, some comments on the conclusions and policy recommendations. In appendix, uh, I put um, a battery of robustness checks. I, I want to keep the presentation 
more user friendly and, and as less technical as possible so that we can focus on the key elements of the work. And then if somebody has questions, we can talk about the technicalities afterwards or after my presentation. So what is the paper about? Well, the paper, as, as Grace at the beginning introduced, uh, is about the role of social trust considered as a sort of a collective asset uh, to test whether in Chinese provinces with higher social trust, firms innovation, in this case intended in terms of number of patents applications and patents granted, is more pronounced. Why this kind of research question? Because it is highly supported by the literature of the radius of trust and by the literature of social capital and innovation, which argue that essentially social trust boosts cooperation among individuals and therefore enhances innovation within the environment in which this social trust is highly disseminated. So how did the idea of this research come about? Uh, it's mainly uh, supported by a, an upcoming research literature uh, that shows that there has been an increasing appetite among economists and among practitioners and among policymakers and among many other academics regarding the uh, intertwin and the linkages between institutions and cultural aspects in different economic contexts. So looking at social trust uh, as an uh, element of culture or element of social values with respect to research and development, there, there has been quite insightful works that focused on social trust and research and development investment, but these works have been mainly focused on OECD countries at the country level and in some cases at the regional level. Let's say that so far there has been very little attention towards transition economies like China. Uh, which are experiences, transitions, not only in economic terms, but also in institutional terms. So you can imagine that our work represents essentially a, a key and a tremendous opportunity to address this gap and, and to provide findings uh, uh, that will be able to contribute to, to the discussion and to, and, and to the literature, as well as uh, um, that they can be able to suggest some policy recommendations or some policy addresses, let's say. Why social trust? Well, the social trust, uh, uh, besides being one of my key research streamlines, but it's also interesting and intriguing aspect because it is defined as a, a social device. It reflects the average trustworthiness of people and the expectations that other people will comply with both formal rules and informal commitments, which in institutional economics, sometimes these are labeled with the term social contract. So, if we look a bit of the social capital theory, uh, trust, uh, be, because of these characteristics, increases the level of cooperation among individuals and among business partners. Uh, it reduces the transaction cost because essentially mitigates the, uh, the, the, the need of monitoring uh, business partners or bon monitoring uh, other actors with whom we engage in social exchange continuously. And, and it creates ties and mutual collaborations, essentially, essential for high risk innovation investments. So uh, there have been quite empirical evidence in different works showing that trust enhances economic performance, improves financial development, investment and firms productivity. If we look at social trust in terms of social trust in a context, uh, a relationship with firms, uh, Bianco and Meon, for example, find that social trust facilitates firms to consider long-run investment decisions, looking at riskier but potentially more productive processes. So, and, and these drive uh, one element of, of the research focus. The other element of the research focus is the context of analysis of China. But China is a, a very interesting context of analysis. Uh, uh, for example, first of all, from the innovation perspective, because uh, innovation is becoming a, a core part of Chinese economic development agenda. Uh, so uh, the, Chinese, the Chinese economy is also an interesting context because it really reflects an example of transition economy from mainly export oriented 
based on cost advantages to a more complex economy that is becoming innovation driven, uh, even within an international arena. So initially, this transition has attracted many studies, mainly at the country level, and some of them at the regional level, but focusing more on quality of public institutions. So one inspiring work was the one of Crescenzi et al. in 2012 from Journal Economic Geography, uh, who highlights that uh, the, the new research frontiers for, for studying aspects of innovations are really the emerging economies, especially those like um, China and India, uh, as they are the, the two main countries that essentially has been increasing the investing spending over the GDP. Uh, the point is that at that time, in 2012, Crescenzi found that even though these countries have increased a lot of the, the research and development spending over the GDP, this was not translated immediately into a proportionate innovation growth rate. And, um, and one of the key elements or suggestion uh, in, the, in that paper was that probably because of the complexity of these countries, especially of China, uh, it would be more interesting to look at these patterns more at the regional level or the province level in case of China. Uh, and evidence uh, uh, so far found suggested that um, um, Chinese innovation is highly influenced by its regional economic geography because it tends to be higher in context with, with, with the higher agglomerations of industry, better infrastructure, and more industry specializations. So China is also interesting because uh, looking a little bit more uh, uh, at the context, it also exhibits regional economic and institutional disparities, uh, which which key which plays a key role because local formal institutions have the the main responsibility to adapt uh, and to put in place uh, uh, rules and regulations set at the government level and what has been found so far is that innovation is higher in regions with more effective formal institutions but still has been said very little about the role of informal institutions like social trust uh, and in fact, from the trust perspective, uh, Chinese development and innovation essentially uh, can't ignore the role of informal institutions such as social trust. China, we need to consider that it is a vast territory where the development of religion, history, language, and social culture in different regions is extremely unbalanced or uneven, quite diversified, let's say, or heterogeneous. Uh, resulting in huge differences in the level of social trust between regions. So, uh, Li et al, they consider China a typical relational society influenced by uh, Confucianism, where trust uh, is a device that essentially drives relationships uh, between uh, actors, economic actors and social actors. So, the influence of social trust uh, shaped by the traditional Confucian uh, culture uh, is still active and prominent uh, in, in economic activities. And uh, uh, an interesting case study was the one conducted by Williams and Du in 2014 within the regions of Beijing, Shanghai and, and Guangzhou, where they found that trusting relationship with local external partners promotes subsidiarity outcomes. And, 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 re and the results are obtained by collecting um, and processing like uh, uh, these uh, these data at the local level. Now, but again, nothing has been done across regional level or or, um, or across province level in, in, in a more standard way, let's say. So what we do is um, we, we take advantage of, of this gap in the literature and uh, and we take data from different sources. So the data from social trust come from the Chinese General Social Survey. Uh, and they, which are based on the following question, which is the classical standard question, which is in general social interactions or contacts that do not directly involve money interest, do you think there are many people you can trust among strangers? And this is a, like a classical Likert scale questions from one to five, where one is mostly untrustworthy and five is mostly trustworthy. 
while firms' financials and patent statistics uh, are obtained from the um, from the China stock uh, market uh, and accounting research database is the classical official database where many other researches have been conducted. Uh, part of this database is also managed by the Wharton University of Pennsylvania, for example, and provincial GDP, R&D investment uh, and the foreign direct investment uh, data comes from the China Statistical Yearbook. Our analysis follows a span period between 2012 and 2017, and uh, as you can see in the next slide, uh, considers several different variables. I, I, again, I don't want to be focused on the details of the variables of the data. We can talk about it later, uh, but you, you can see that we follow uh, innovation models that are very standard in the literature to understand uh, our, our analysis. And uh, what are the key findings uh, are the following first of all the, the main key findings from the from the baseline model is that we find that the number of patents both applications and granted patents increases in provinces with higher level of social trust it seems that these results confirms the uh, the social trust theory or the social capital theory somehow that is quite common in institutional studies uh, and these results are very interesting, uh, remain consistent to a series of uh, sensitivity analyses and to a specific identification strategy. So we, we conduct many robustness checks and, and we find that these results are very consistent, which is good news. We also conduct a series of model extensions that we find opportune given, given the context and, and given the research questions why we consider firms' financial constraints, we consider quality of formal institutions, we separate between state-owned and non-state-owned firms, as well as between high-tech and non-high-tech firms. And very interestingly, we really find that social trust is more impactful among firms exhibiting more financial constraints in provinces with lower quality formal institutions, among non-state-owned rather than state-owned firms, and among high-tech rather than non-high-tech firms. As here, I just show you the, the baseline model with, with the regression analysis, uh, just uh, as a confirmation. Sorry, Luca. That... Yes? Sorry, Luca. I think the yes? slice is not moving, right? No? You sure? What about others? We see the slice moving or not. It is moving. Yes, it's not like moving. moving. No. Yeah. Okay, okay. Works. Yes, works now. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So the these are the regression analysis on the baseline model. As you can see, the, the, the coefficient of the trust variable is consistent across all the functional form. We also use industry fixed effect and the air fixed effect to, to, to make the model even more robust. Um, then, as I said, we, we conduct a series of extension of the model. First of all, we find we, we look at financial constraints firms because innovation activities uh, and, and firms also depends on external financing. Uh, External finances can be used, for example, to invest for the acquisition and development of know-how or to attract partners. So where financial resources are scarce, non-financial assets might become more effective. Uh, there is a, a, an interesting literature uh, run by the Utati and, and others in the technological districts. So they, they say, they show that essentially trust becomes an intangible asset in some cases uh, that boosts cooperation among firms, especially particularly those with more limited access to external financing. And, and it works through what it calls, the Otati calls, a custom or reciprocal cooperations. So trust essentially enhances these uh, values of cooperative behaviors uh, between partners, let's say. And this is essential for keeping promising within both financial agreement, business agreements, subcontracting, as well as non-paper contracts. What we find is very interesting. We find that indeed social trust becomes more effective uh, where among firms that are more financially constrained rather than among firms that are less financially constrained. And this is valid both in the case of uh, 
patents applications as well as the patent granted. Then we also extend our model by looking at the quality of and essentially we clusters between firms uh, which within between contexts with high quality formal institutions and, and contexts with low quality formal institutions. And what we find is essentially that, again that trust is more effective uh, within uh, contexts that suffer of uh, effective formal institutions uh, rather than in contexts with uh, more and better quality institutions. It seems like uh, that trust it becomes a device uh, active uh, uh, and significant in the moment in which the quality of public institutions somehow uh, becomes less prominent. Uh, and then what we do, we separate uh, and, and we do a heterogeneity analysis. So we consider state-owned versus non-state-owned firms, simply because uh, there is a quite interesting literature showing and, and discussing that state-owned firms in China tend to have less financial constraints and they take advantage of their political connections uh, and government endorsements. So essentially uh, state-owned firms uh, uh, tend to have uh, less constraints in general. Uh, what we find is that very interesting again trust uh, seems to be more impactful uh, between non-state-owned firms uh, that than between state-owned firms, both for uh, patent uh, applications and patent grantings. Granted, sorry. And 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 lastly, uh, we also separate between high-tech versus non-high-tech firms. Uh, as we know, we already, as I mentioned before, social trust essentially enhances a boost network relationship and, uh, and knowledge exchange uh, with the aim of reducing also transaction costs. So you can think about it that in relatively high risk investment in industries such as high-tech and technological districts, network relationships and knowledge and knowledge exchange are essentially important practices uh, that, that drive uh, uh, economic actors to engage in joint projects. So this means that enterprises, uh, especially in high-tech firms, use network relation relationship to exchange and acquire explicit and tacit knowledge and conduct knowledge integration and creative uh, exchanges through organizational learning. So again, very interesting what we find is that uh, trust, or social trust becomes a more impactful device among high-tech firms compared to non-high-tech firms. Uh, it is valid also for non-high-tech firms, but among high-tech firms, the, the coefficient is quite high. Uh, in this case, for example, you can see it's done. Uh, both for um, uh, patent application and patent granted. So at the end, we, we have, again, these are robust to a series of other sensitivity analysis that they put in appendix. I, I, I don't want here to bombard you with technicalities, but at, at the end of the day, uh, these findings we find that are quite useful, e even though they're a bit primordial, so in providing a very defined and specific policy recommendations, but they still can provide, in, in our opinion, key information to a series of actors, including policymakers as well as investors. Already the fact that we can map the distribution of trust across regions that can help already investors identify regions or markets with higher level of social capital endowment, where relatively high risk investments, for example, in high tech, have higher probability to be translated into some sort of successful innovative outcome. And this is important since cultural and social values are among the key factors influencing investment decisions. If we think about the Western economies, for example, this is a key example in this respect, are represented by industrial districts and technological clusters. These are an interesting example in the Western economy where along with high specialized human capital and entrepreneurial traditions, a system of values based on trust and cooperative behavior characterize the social platform where innovative projects take form. Uh, and our results, we believe, they are also important for policymakers. Trust tend to be 
are quite persistent factors, which changes and varies across uh, location quite considerably, but does uh, but changes quite little in a short and medium period of time. It doesn't mean that it doesn't change in a medium long run, but in a short run changes a little bit in the sense that, uh, let, let, let me give you this example. If, if I run a survey asking a group of people asking you whether you, you trust the society or you, you trust the strangers or you, you trust people that you don't know in general today, and there's an average I receive from, from one to 10, I receive five, and I run this survey next year or in two years' time, very unlikely, I think, uh, I will receive a, a, a different score. So the, the score will remain between four and six, I would say, uh, an, an average. But if I run this survey probably in 10 years' time or in eight years' time, then I, I might end up with a different score. Okay, so uh, the, the short to medium run is a little bit um, uh, relatively stable but is varies a lot across locations and across type of people. Uh, so the fact that it's stable a long period of time might create some challenges in promoting trust through some po public uh, policies. However, it can also incentivize policymakers to think about very carefully innovation policies that can contribute towards creating motivation for cooperative behavior. This is called in uh, economic policy co-benefit analysis. You want to you want to improve one element in order to also improve another element. Okay. In, in this respect, our study is essentially uh, aligns with the existing research on social capital and innovation, supporting the idea that policies formulated around the mobility of knowledgeable individuals across the regions and institutions, along with collaborative research initiatives, can play a key role. So such policies have the potential to foster the development of trust-based relationships and threaten the outward expansions of established networks among agents involved in innovation. And this is important because our finding can really suggest that this way of going. Uh, for the moment, uh, uh, I'm done with my presentation. Thank you so much, and I'm very happy to, to receive comments from the discussant and, and from the rest of the participants. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Luca, for your interesting study and great presentation. And uh, after Luca's study, I think we have, uh, after Luca's presentation, we I think we have a more comprehensive understanding about his study. And now I would like to invite our main discussant, uh, Alice, today to give us some uh, further discussion or general comments related with uh, Luca's study. And I see uh, Greza uh, is raising hand to ask some question, right? So shall we wait uh, after Alice's discussion and then we can continue the time to uh, raise more questions among our audience, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you very me. much for, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. for your patience, thank you very much. And Alice. Uh, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Shall um, we invite you to give us some uh, thoughts on your uh, on, on this research? Okay, okay. Uh, maybe allow me to try again for uh, see whether I can get uh, my video on. Let me let me just a second. Okay. No, no, sorry. I think uh, I saw something said. Uh, Private society. Okay, forget it. I think I try my best anyway. Um, Okay, okay, no worry, no worry. Yeah, it's okay. We can okay. continue okay. Uh, discussion anyway. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, I, I know it. Okay, find another chance to see me. Um, 
I think this is a very interesting um, research. According to uh, Luca and uh, uh, co-authors, uh, I think this is uh, um, a already had some uh, basic research on institution and culture influence on the uh, uh, firm innovation. So that's good. And I'm, I, I think this uh, uh, especially is focused on uh, social trust, um, firm innovation in China. So we have key, three keywords now here. So social trust, social trust uh, oh, actually, you know, for um, even for only social trust, it's very complicated. You know, individual could trust uh, other individual, individuals or uh, organizations, even government or, or, or parties. So the social trust is very broad and very complicated. And another conception is uh, firm innovation is also very complicated, even only for the um, uh, indicators or uh, abstract, uh, abs <clears throat> abstract uh, you can see very, um, uh, you know, over 10, at least over 10 uh, indicator aspect to describe a firm uh, innovation. So for these two conceptions, very complicated, plus a China, China is, we know it's a uh, um, uh, broad, it's a uh, um, you know a uh, big country and uh, uh, big differences between among the provinces and uh, areas. So uh, this makes this uh, study sh uh, could be very difficult and uh, very um, you know must be very <clears throat> cautious. So for this study, the first thing I think. I want. I would like to confirm to to affirm the author's uh, the courage, or it's a, a kind of a spirit of exploration. Um, the positive relationship between social trust and uh, corporate innovation has not yet been re revealed, uh, especially in country like China. Um, in the last ten. It last 30 years, so called reform and open. Uh, China experienced is a high speed development period. But as we know, uh, regarding of the social interest, I would not say it's uh, um, uh, it's up or it's um, it's uh, very positive. Social trust uh perspective the the whole society it at least is up and down or uh, experience up and down and uh, uh people trust not only the stranger strangers but also the acquaintances okay colleagues even family members are in question so, uh, this is a so-called a uh, a little bit is a uh, conflict uh, between the on one hand it's a social trust it seems down and the other hand the the innovation or firm innovation is up so though Luca gave uh, uh, and uh, also causers gave a uh, conclusion like that but in fact we can do more exploration uh, in qualitative perspective. So, so let's see about this um, topic and methodology and the uh, methodology application. Also, we can uh, do more discussion about the conclusion and the significance of the study. And then we can get some, a little bit of comment and uh, suggestion for this uh, study. So regarding for the topic, I think the topic is um, interesting and the words to do more explanation, exploration, because the social trust itself uh, has been studied, but the social trust and uh, firm innovation, the, the, the relevance are uh, not uh, being studied so much. Uh, after I uh, read 
look at some several papers, I did a little bit of research on this. So I found um, the relative to relevant uh, papers on uh, Google, uh, it's a total number is seven. Um, three in Chinese and uh, four in English. And most of them were quite similar. Okay, all about, uh, uh, you know, find the it's positive, uh, relevant uh, between the two elements. But, but the interesting things is uh, almost all use the same, same methodology. Uh, so-called, you know, use a panel uh, data, uh, different provinces, and uh, some from 2008 to 2018, some from uh, 2002 to 2017, or some from 2007 to 2017. That's uh, uh, make me think that's a little bit weird. So uh, this is seven uh, papers, uh, similar methodology and similar uh, result, but uh, still, I think it's uh, uh, worth to do more, uh, you know, research. Even we got some uh, negative result, but it's worth to start this new field to see uh, whether uh, really, you know, uh, social trust, uh, inference, uh, firm innovation, so much it's uh, the best the the most um inference than i mean other uh factors for example technology co-innovation or r d or uh management uh, innovation or anyway anything else related a to the firm innovation and uh, um Actually, that's very interesting uh, finding is uh, Lucas' um, conclusion. Uh, uh, one conclusion is quite different from uh, another person's uh, uh, three authors' uh, study. Uh, it's Shuang Jian Li, Jun Qing Li, and uh, Yun Zhang. Uh, their research, they got conclusion is high tech, high tech uh, form. It's not so much as non-tech firm. Others are the same. So uh, about this methodology, I think I already uh, got mm, at least oh, 10, uh, over 10 uh, similar methodology paper. So um, I always feel this is uh, um, something new, but uh, for me, it's uh, uh, in question. Uh, one re reason is the uh, whether we can get exactly precise or the data uh, from uh, uh, the right resources or sources. Uh, the other, the other question is this is um, uh, methodology is uh, more science of mathematics. Mathematics. So use formulas and then put, uh, you know, x and the, and the get y. Uh, so this um, this if don't if we don't combine with qualitative study, it really can get a right conclusion. That's the question mark here. So I think for the methodology. I think still need more um, uh, confirmation or more uh, precise study. Mm, the, among the three, uh, the seven uh, papers, um, they all use the uh, almost the same formula, same, uh, <clears throat> you know, the <clears throat> variables. So they, uh, uh, but why they got quite different conclusion. So the data or the indicator of variable selections and the, uh, the, uh, the result, um, you know, the result analy analysis seems uh, uh, getting important. So for the methodology, my opinion is 
typically, you know, methods like uh, uh, survey <clears throat> interviews, uh, some traditional social science study methodology here seems uh, doesn't work. So use more uh, about you know quantitative study, and so and uh, uh, even you know uh, some um, re reliability uh, of the data source uh, seems uh, uh, cause some problem. So here I just think the uh, the methodology is is interesting. It's new. My background is uh, physics, so I'm not so uh, I'm uh, I'm familiar with. Uh, uh, Formula, uh, uh, formula, and uh, with the data and uh, variables, but uh, when we use variables and data in the social science, we need to think it's whether it's reliable, or whether the CV service like a Chinese General Social Survey, which uh, Luca used, and uh, WVS World Value Service, or uh, even those surveys, the conclusion whether is reliable for our conclusion, because it's not uh, um, not uh, easy to judge this methodology is okay or not okay right now. So that's see the future. Okay. In addition, uh, it be, um, because it's an emerging method, uh, so it it uh, seems a proving relevance um, methodology. So it's make uh, any sense? That's my question. Okay, and then uh, it seems that the hypothesis we we have a hypothesis first, and then we find a, a, a quantitative study to prove. Okay, and uh, number three, I think it's not so easy to have a, a new significance or to uh, have breakthrough funding. Of course, this is also a question mark because this way always prove something and first give a hypothesis usually. So whether we can have breakthrough funding, if we have breakthrough funding, whether it's reliable for social science uh, scientists. And number four is the future research space is limited, limited or unlimited. It's have, or in other words, it have a bright, Future, or it just a uh, mm, methodology is use use this methodology you can solve a lot of problems. Okay, as we already seen uh, in the publication, and uh, finally the data of uh, all the seven studies are too old. Okay, this one is from 2012 12 to 2018, but others are. Uh, even earlier, so too old whether can uh, uh, present the uh, the right now the situation or uh, status. So uh, some questions about the methodology. Of course, we can do more uh, further discussion with the authors later. Okay, so I think this is uh, the general my uh, my general um, uh, thinking or. Uh, a, a just uh, um, a very beginning thought about this paper. Hopefully, uh, we can um, do more discussion later. So yeah, that's all. Okay, Grace. Yeah. So any well, other many questions? Thanks, uh -huh. to, uh -huh. <laughs> many 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 <laughs> thanks to give us so in depth discussion and comments towards Luca's study. And I believe after your discussion, everybody of us have a deeper understanding in this area. And also you give us general idea how to improve the study or research from that. Uh, uh, spending different uh, to including more different uh, research methods. I think you have already asked, uh, answered uh, nearly all of my questions, but I still have a concern really to uh, want to discuss with you is about the uh, conclusion and suggestion of Luca's study. You know, Luca's study is very interesting, and also we know China is a uh, uh, 
a special context, which is during the transition period. And as you mentioned, it's a very, very broad country, and there's a great regional differences and very complex. Uh, this difference in the business innovation may related with the economics condition or may related with uh, uh, culture issues. Mm. But anyway, look, give us a very new uh, emerging perspective to try to explain it from the social trust concept. But as Luca mentioned that, he think uh, social trust maybe is a little bit persistent factors and which is relatively difficult to be changed over a short to medium uh, time period. But from your perspective, do you think there are any possible ways for the government or industry or even the universities or other stakeholders to work together to force some social trust and trying to promote business innovation in China? Okay, uh, that's very good questions. You know, you know, uh, we we are a uh, uh, triple helix institute, so we study triple helix. This is an uh, idea uh, research field for triple helix. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, in 2006, uh, we published, uh, uh, Henry Eskowitz and uh, myself, we published paper uh, in um, um, public and, uh, uh, science and public policy. It's about uh, uh, triple helix twins idea. So triple helix twins means we have two triple helix uh, uh, to to target uh, innovation and sustainable development. And this uh, uh, social trust and uh, form innovation just in between the two triple helix. Why? Let's uh, explain a little bit more. Uh, the, the innovation triple helix uh, is university, government, and industry. The purpose is for industry, is for innovation. So the form of innovation, of course, included in this. So this is, a, but uh, uh, Luke and uh, co-authors already found uh, the, uh, that they have a relevant, okay? The uh, social trust and uh, uh, form innovation is very uh, meaningful. Uh, I think it's uh, meaningful, uh, but the first study maybe found, you know, how much Okay, it's better more than other factors or it's the, the most important factors or it's not so important. Then makes sense for policymakers. Okay, and so uh, our uh, suggestion is uh, a triple helix uh, um, for innovation for the form innovation uh, side. And then the, tr the, the social trust that should belong to institution and the culture uh, dimension. So we need to think of this in a different perspective. That is uh, so-called a university public government triple helix. Okay, oh, this triple helix for sustainability. So this could be, you know, even uh, refer to culture, um, refer to um, ethics, uh, even, you know, uh, uh, corporate uh, 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 social uh, responsibility and uh, such, such uh, uh, concept. So if you see the, uh, I, I don't know how many uh, people here read about the triple helix twin. Anyway, a uh, triple helix twin can be coupled to each other, coupling to each other. That means uh, a triple helix twin could be, you know, uh, two triple helix can work together and target both, both dimension, dimensions, which is Great. innovation and sustainability. I'm sorry, what's that? Thank okay. you. That, that's terrific. Grace, you, you see that there were two questions. There's one from, from Grancia and one from Klaus. Could could we bring them in, please, Grace? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Alice, for bringing mm -hmm. us maybe new perspective to further discuss these questions. And mm -hmm. we need to leave some time to, uh, to our audience to read some questions. So first, uh, 
Brazil. So what, what, what's your question then? Um, is this me? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I found uh, both uh, presentations very interesting indeed. It's a question for uh, Luca. Um, and I may not have understood the, uh, everything you said, actually. I, so, uh, but I'm, I, I'll make the question anyway, and then you see whether I, it was already there. The question is, have you controlled for the structure and composition of the population, for example, age profile or how long the firms have been in the region and what is the percentage of uh, firms from outside versus the, the, the heterogeneity in general? Thank you. Shall I, shall I reply uh, quickly? Hello? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, grazie. First of all, thank you very much. And thank you, Alice, for, for comments. I, I took notes. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. very, very, very interesting and very helpful comments. And grazie. Yes, very, very interesting points. Uh, sorry, I share very quickly the screen again because you, you you tackle uh, quite important elements. The answer is yes, in, in the limit of the variables that we had, but we control for many, many variables from firm age, firm size, uh, uh, the proportion of the first larger shareholders, uh, the, um, the type of also of, uh, of regions. So we also included uh, regions that were part of the initial reform in the 1980s, for example. And then on top of that, that I haven't I haven't showed for for time reasons and, um, and for the nature of this presentation, we also control for uh, uh, sorry if I if I move fast. Uh, uh, we also control for other regional lagged variables, which is a foreign direct investment like by one year or in the same year and the proportion of, of, the, of external firms. So we have a very large variety of controls so that we want to keep uh, even we want to check whether these results are consistent also if we include also this control. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> to, to just to just address one of the points of, of Alice, uh, but I cannot address all the possible points. We also uh, change the innovation variable into other type of innovation variables. So, so we, we we use like a, a research and development, a grant of a research development, application of a research and development, and it seems all consistent. Uh, we also use an instrumental variables at a certain point to see if there is endogeneity problems. And even when we use instrumental variables, our results are quite consistent. So in that respect, um, uh, I'm very, I'm very confident about about the, the main the main regression model. So that's that's okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, it, it, Alice point out quite a few interesting points, and uh, and definitely I agree with her. We need to be very 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 cautious in uh, giving some conclusions that are standard in the sense that uh, of course uh, these are data. And, uh, and these data are made for the inferential analysis, but we need to be very cautious with the conclusions. Um, thank you. Grazie. Is he, did, did I address all your questions, more or less? Uh, you are mute. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, to make this clarification. So I say thank you. You did, yes. Thank, thank you, you Grazie, for your question. And, and next, uh, I think, Carl, you also have questions related with the study, right? Yeah, it's essentially more a comment or a contribution to the discussion of what this means here, because I let me say I, I, I like the paper a lot. I hope I, I, I'm not sure I fully understood the results and I hope I had a chance to read the paper and I will uh, gladly engage in a discussion about this. I, you may know that I've, I've published about social capital and, and innovation and also about Guanxi and uh, innovation in China. So, and I'm, I'm glad to see that you have uh, that your conclusions are, are in line with the with what I've uh, what I have come up, come up with. So, but I have some uh, questions. One is about the concept of social care, trust, 
And, uh, you know, in the discussion of social capital, we the distinction between bonding social capital and bridging social capital. And bonding is uh, if there is a lot of social, a lot of trust and uh, within close groups, but very little kind of uh, trust be between groups and, and and bridging capital is trust in, in general. And I, I, I gather that what you're talking about is the last, is about more kind of bridging social capital, but uh, I think it's it, there are some issues here. It's, it's uh, for instance, social capital, it's difficult to, to add because they, they are very different forms. And uh, I think there are more or less the same problem here. And let me give an example where it could be a problem. In, in uh, I think there is, China is in situation, is in a, in a, in a transition, as, uh, as uh, Grace said, that uh, and in many respects. And one of them is that uh, traditional business relationship in China, there is a, a lot of talk about they, them being guided by guanxi, which is a, a, a Chinese word for, for social trust. And uh, and you you uh, engage with the uh, people you know, or you engage in in relationship in in uh, activities that create this kind of uh, trust in in more kind of uh, narrow relationships. Uh, but I think there is a development from this to a more kind of interper more kind of bridging uh, trust with the trust with the more also a developed formal institutions and so on so and and one interesting detail I, I, in the literature here is that there's obvious a difference between different age groups i uh, to put it roughly then older people believe in trust and 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 think this is a good thing younger chinese don't they they want to, they are more relying on formal institutions and they feel, feel it's a lot of waste of time on on building those uh, relationships and so on. So, and I'll, this is just a main point here. It actually it could be that one of the reasons why the high trust, high tech companies rely more on social trust is that, and while non high tech don't do it as to the same degree, is simply that the people engaged in in high tech are younger. They are they are used to thinking. In in uh, m bridging social capital, in in relying on formal institutions, yeah, they don't rely on Guanxi in the same in the same way. But anyway, a uh, very interesting paper. I I I I'm, I look forward to read it, and we'll have some more comments. I'm sure. Thank you, thank you, Klaus. And look, uh, I think if you like, you could further develop a, a, a further discussion with Klaus and maybe Alice later, yes. right? Thank yes. you very much can I, for your interest today. Can I just uh, reply just 10 seconds? Uh, first of all, Klaus, yes, you will read the paper. When we have it, you will be one of the first <laughs> to read the papers. You were already in our list. <laughs> and I will send it to Alice as well so that we can yeah. have... Uh, uh, and thank you for the comments, uh, well noted. Uh, thank you. Very, very, very happy we can discuss about it later, both with you and Alice. Thanks. Thank you, Luca, for your great presentation. And thank you very much for interest in our event today. And uh, we, uh, we have already made record of the uh, debate. So if you are interested in this event, and you can go to our uh, website to uh, watch the video again. Again, thank you very much for your participants. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Grace. Thank you, Luca. Thank you very thank much. You, Lucas colleagues. Thank you, Alice. Uh, thank you, everybody, Th thank for joining you. us. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll bye. We'll be in touch bye. on all of this. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.